Hello, my name is Tabati Manuel, a Nigerian medical doctor currently working in Australia. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my AMC1 experience. If you had watched my earlier video, I told you that I was able to get a job here after I had passed the AMC, got an interview, I was successful in the interview, and then I got a job. So I'm going to share with you my experience in the AMC. I believe that's going to help you, especially if you're intending to sit for the exams. Before we jump into the details, a friend of mine, had been in Australia, I think since 2021. And I remember when I was preparing for the exams, there's something he stated that he had written the exams a while before now, and he might not be able to help me as much or something like that. And it didn't make sense to me till after I've written the exams and I've now realized something. I wrote the exams in 2024. And now with 2025, some things change because AMC is quite a tricky exam. Fewer people write the exams, especially Nigerians, compared to the other exams like PLAB, USMLE, and MCCQE. AMC is not really an exam that much people write. And since now there is a huge interest or a growing interest in people moving to Australia, I believe this video is going to help you. So it's just a year ago that I wrote mine. I believe it's a bit more recent and it will be quite useful for you. So if this is something you're interested in, let's dive in. The first thing we're going to discuss about is my exams preparation. To state this, I prepared for the exams within three months. And based on the experience I've had, this is not something you should do. It's a very risky thing to do. Why I was able to do that is because it was the window in which I could write the exams. By the time I made up my mind to write the exams and the date I could be able to fly to the exam center, it was just three months. So I had to push myself to write the exams. It was a very aggressive form of preparation that my wife was wondering what type of exams it was. She had seen me write a couple of exams but never saw me this engaged. In fact, I had written an exam roughly four months before I started preparing for AMC and I had passed the exam. That's the MRKM exams. After I passed that one, my wife was wondering what kind of exams is this that I was just reading, participating in groups and the rest. But it was because I had a very short period to prepare for it and I needed to be aggressive. In fact, it was so bad that later on, my ophthalmologist had to see me. And somehow again, they had to prescribe new lenses for me as those other ones, they went working again. So please give yourself time. Don't rush the exams. It's not really worth it. Then for the materials that I used, the first one is the AMC handbook of MCQs. It's a very old book, but why that is important to me is it gives you an idea of how the exams is. It's coming from AMC themselves. It's not just to go through the past questions, also understand the answers. Sometimes they will ask a question, I might think the answers are very random. Till you start going through the explanations and you now realize how closely related the answers are and how one thing can change an answer from being A to B. AMC is that tricky. Two people might seemingly have the same questions and then the answers could actually be different. That's why I would recommend you going through the AMC book. It gives you an idea of the thing. Don't go and cram down one for past question. You will likely not see any question from whatever is in the AMC handbook. Second thing is that because it's quite old, written in the mid 2000s, because of that, Many medical knowledge have been improved, they have been modified, they have been revised. So some of the answers, they are not really the answers for now. So that one is to help you understand how the questions go and there are details about the exams and everything. That's why I would recommend that to anyone that wants to prepare for AMC. The second material is actually a subscription. So you can use either the Amidex or the M plus X, whichever one you decide to want to use it. I had used both, but I prefer the Amidex because the answers are more detailed, like the explanations for why this is this and this is not this. It's more detailed to me than M plus X. M plus X has more question banks, but then they don't really go into details in explaining the answers and the options like Amidex does. So I personally prefer Amidex, but whichever you want to work with, it's good, it's okay for you. So Amidex or M plus X, if you can do both, please, why not? You can do both, yeah. 
Then there was a WhatsApp group that I joined. It was initially some of us Nigerians that are in Saudi Arabia and we were going through materials. That was the group that I was talking about. We usually have Google Meet meetings to apart from answering questions by typing in the main group. That helped to a large extent. Sometimes when you read something, you think that it has stuck inside that brain. I discovered that. Eh, eh. So by the time you speak and the rest, it helps many things to enter inside your brain. There are also some groups on Facebook and Telegram that you can go through. Those help too, to a large extent. These are the materials that I used. Then the next thing we're going to talk about is the cost. Apart from the fact that the exams is quite tricky and the password is not really too impressive. Another thing that tends to push people, especially from the part of the world that I come from, from writing the exams, is that it's the most expensive exams to write. So imagine you pay very huge amount of money for an exam that you are more likely to fail. It's not worth the risk, I say, for many people. So because of that, fewer people write the exams. And because fewer people write the exams, you tend not to understand the exams if you're intending to write because there are fewer people that can help you. And maybe those that had written are people that had written a while back and they don't have recent knowledge or recent materials to guide you in what to do. The MC1 cost about 2,920 Australian dollars. But before you even write the exams, you have to set up an AMC portfolio. And the AMC portfolio, to set it up, will cost you around 642 Australian dollars, minus maybe other banking charges and the rest. So you have to set that one up, pay it, and then you have to verify your medical credential, which you have to use a CFMG portal to do that. And for a new person, if you've never set up an ACFMG account before, you would pay 150 US dollars to set it up. And then for each document you're going to upload for them to verify, it's going to cost you $100. So for someone like me, I just needed to upload my MBBS certificate from the university. And that was enough, it was $100. So $150 to set up the Epic account, plus $100, that's $250. Then the next one is your school may require you to pay money for them to complete the registration process for you. My school did that. I come from the University of Jones and I had to pay another extra $100 for them to complete the process and Epic will now get the verified form of the document for me. So that cost me a total of $350 minus the $642 for the AMC portfolio. So you have to ask people that have done it from your school how much it costs. That will help you to plan appropriately. Then when Epic verifies your credential, you have to also indicate to Epic that they have to send it to AMC. They will now send it to AMC. That's why it's very important for you to have an AMC portfolio before you do the Epic. Or if you have done the Epic before and you need your credentials to be sent to Epic, I think it will cost you around $50 for them to send it to whichever exam center is available. You would see the options there. AMC uses PSC VUE and so you have to go to the PSC VUE site and choose whichever country you want to write. When I wrote it, I was in Saudi Arabia. There's no place to write it in Saudi Arabia. The closest place I could write it was in India. So I traveled to India to write my exams. Luckily for Nigerians now, initially I think it was only South Africa that was the center in Africa. Now there is in Kenya. But discussing with a colleague, he now told me that in fact it's even cheaper or more convenient to go and write it in the UK. That's London than to even go to Kenya. But whichever one is comfortable for you. So that's another cost again because now whichever country you're going to write, you have to know whether you require a visa or not. The cost of the visa, then the transportation itself, accommodation, feeding, and other logistics that are things that you have to consider too. So the exams is pretty expensive, it is. Now let's talk about the exams itself. It's a computer adaptive test and it has 150 questions that are supposed to answer in three and a half hours. That's 210 minutes. The difference between a computer adaptive test and a computer based test is that you answering the current question will determine the type of question you're going to get. So it's not like sets in stone. As you're starting the exams, both you and the computer don't know how you're going to end. 
So when you answer one question correctly, the next question will be slightly more difficult than the one you had answered before. So as you keep answering correctly, it gets increasingly difficult. If you don't answer correctly, the next question will be slightly easier. And that's how it goes. So at the end, what I was able to understand is that you might answer the same question, but all the questions do not carry the same weight. Some questions carry more marks than others, per se, based on the difficulty of the question. And then another thing to note is that you cannot go back to the previous question. So that means that once you answer and click next, that's all. You are done. So you have to learn to balance answering correctly and then maximizing your time because before you know Time will just fly like that. That exams can be quite tricky. It's not like other exams that you can flag the question or just leave them on mark and then after you're done, you can go back to them. Usually that's the method I answer questions. I just start with the ones I can easily answer. It's the mindset I've had from med school MCQs that we do negative marking then. So I start with the ones that I can answer comfortably and then when I finish, I count them. If they are good enough, I wouldn't go back because negative marking will cost me. But then now the professional exams I have written are not negative marking so I will go back and then see those ones I need to think to a certain extent and then I know I'll be able to answer them Then when I finish those ones if I need more marks and I'll go back and go and try my best with the remaining ones it's not going to cost me anything to attempt them that's how the exam goes for the AMC you would have to be careful because once you click next you cannot go back again with this experience especially with the adaptive nature of the exams you might come out feeling very very stressed because the exams was difficult for you and it's very likely that you did well and you can come out feeling like ah this thing was too easy and i have talked with a few people that felt very confident that they would pass the exams and unfortunately it didn't turn out that way the exams is quite tricky that's why i'll tell you that please take your time to prepare for the exams especially with the cost and the resources that is being needed to pass these exams it's not something that you should just do casually so when i wrote my exams it took about four weeks before the result came out for each year the exams are written every month for six days from a particular Monday to Saturday. So that means there are people that write Monday, others will write Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So you can pick whichever date you want to write the exam. And the exam months are usually between February to November. That means January and December are exams free. When I wrote mine, that was last year, I wrote it in June. Our result came out in July. And it was four weeks from when we wrote the exam. The first Thursday, after I had written the exams when the result came out. But then later on, a few months later, I changed to three weeks. That's the Friday after the exams week, you get your result. And you need at least 250 marks to pass the exams and then you're successful. So this is my AMC experience. I hope this helps you to a large extent, especially if you're preparing for the exams. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like what I do here and want to remain here, then subscribe. If you have further questions, please let me know in the comment section. I'll try to answer them. And then if you have further information that you want to help us with, especially those that experience, then you can also drop them there as I believe it's going to help a lot of people too. So thank you and I'm going to see my next video. Bye.